Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, welcome to lesson 10, true and false equations. So we're going to start with a little English first. And yes, this is a math lesson, but we're going to start with some English. And exercise one, it says to consider the statement, the President of the United States is a United States citizen. Is the statement a grammatically correct sentence? The President of the United States is a United States citizen. And the statement is gr grammatically correct. I'm going to say yes. What is the subject of the sentence? Well, the subject is the President. What is the verb in the sentence? The verb is, is, and is the sentence true? The president of the United States is a U.S. citizen. Yes, he has to be a U.S. citizen to be a president, so the answer is yes. All right, part B. Consider the statement, the president of France is a United States citizen. Is the statement grammatically correct? Yes, the only word that changed is France. So the president of France is a United States citizen is grammatically correct. Okay. So that's yes. What is the subject? And the subject again is president. And what is the verb in this sentence? Again, the verb is is. And is the sentence true? And the answer is no. The president of France could not be a U.S. citizen. He'd have to be a French citizen. Okay, so there's a couple English sentences to show that even though the sentence is grammatically correct, it may not be true. That's all this is leading up to. Okay, so part C, we're now getting into math. Consider the statement 2 plus 3 equals 1 plus 4. This is a sentence. What is the verb of the sentence? Okay, so back here, when you said the president of France is, 2 plus 3 is equal to 1 plus 4, the verb of the sentence is the equal sign. Okay, this is the verb of the sentence is the equal sign. What is the subject of the sentence? The subject of the sentence is what we're talking about. The, consider the statement, the president is a U.S. citizen. Consider the statement, 2 plus 3 is equal to, 2 plus 3 is the subject. And is the sentence true? Well, 2 plus 3 is 5, and 1 plus 4 is 5, and 5 equals 5, so I'd say yes, that statement is true. Okay, and now moving on to D. Consider the statement, 2 plus 3 equals 9 plus 4. Is the statement a sentence? And the answer is yes. Okay, the uh, verb is the equal sign, and the subject is 2 plus 3. And is the sentence true or false? Well, 2 plus 3 is 5, 9 plus 4 is 13. 5 does not equal 13, so it is false. So just like in math, we can have sentences that are set up correctly, or equations that are set up correctly, and they can either be true or false. So this box down here says, a number sentence is a statement of equally of equality between two numerical expressions. A number sentence is said to be true if both numerical expressions are equivalent. That is, both equate, both evaluate to the same number. It is said to be false otherwise. True and false are called truth values. Okay, page two brings us to exercise two. Determine whether the following number sentences are true or false. All right, so if we start off with this first one, 4 plus 8 is 12 equals 10 plus 5 is 15. Well, 12 does not equal 15, so that is false. All right, 1 half plus 5 eighths equals 1.2 minus 0 0.075. Hmm. Well, this will have to change to eighths. So to get this into an eighth, this would be 4 times 2 is 8, so 4 times 1 is 4. 4 eighths plus 5 eighths 
equals, and that would simplify to 9 eighths, or 1 and 1 eighth. Okay, so 1 and 1 eighth is also 1.125 as a decimal. So if I take 1.2 and subtract 0 0.075, okay, and I do the math here, this is 5, this is 2, this is 1, that's 1. 1. 1.125 equals 1.125, that is true. Okay, part C. 71 point times 603 times 5,876 equals 603 times 5,876 times 71. Okay, so I'm not going to do the actual calculation on this, but I see that there is a 71 and a 71, and there is a 603, and here is a 603, and here is 5,876, 5,876. So there's the, the same numbers are on both sides of the equal sign, and order doesn't matter in multiplic multiplication. That is the commutative property. Okay, or we could look at it as the parentheses being moved. The parentheses are around 71 and 603. Now they're around 71 and 5,876. That is the associative property. Okay, so either one of these two properties would work, and therefore this is a true statement. Okay, part D. 13 times 175 equals 13 times 90 plus 85 times 13. Okay. All right, so what do we have to do here? Well, we have a 13 here, and we have a 13 here. And 90 plus 85 is 175. So if I have 90 13s and then 85 more 13s, that would be the same as 175 13s. So this is true. Okay, 7 plus 9 quantity squared equals 7 squared plus 9 squared. So that is going to be true because that's a distributive property of exponents. So that is true. Or is it? Let's check. Let's use a calculator on this one. I'm thinking that might be true, but it might not. So let's see. 7 plus 9 squared. Enter. 7 squared plus 9 squared. Enter. Huh. 49 plus 81 does not equal 16 squared. That is false. So I cannot dis just distribute those. So, and the reason being is 7 plus 9 squared means 7 plus 9 times 7 plus 9, not 7 squared plus 9 squared. So this would actually be 7 squared plus 63 plus 63 plus 9 squared. Okay, F, pi equals 3.141. Okay, that is false. I can't use the equal sign. It's an approximation because pi is irrational. Okay, so that's false. And the square root of 4 plus 9 equals the square root of 4 plus the square root of 9. Well, the square root of 4 plus 9 is the square root of 13. And they're saying that that equals 2 plus 3 because the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of 13 does not equal 5. Okay, the square root of 25 equals 5, so this is false. Okay, page 3 brings us to part H of these questions. So we're just going to continue on. All right, so fractions you either have to make common denominators to check to see if they're equal, or decimals. This one would be easier with decimals. So 1 half is 0.5. 
plus one third is 0.33 approximately. That continues repeating. So that would be 0.833 repeating. Is that equal? Well, two fifths is the same as four tenths, and four tenths is 0.4. Well, 0.5 plus 0.33 is 0.5, or 0.833 repeating, and that obviously does not equal 0.4 for this. So this is false. One half plus one third equals two sixths. Okay, well again, one half is 0.5 plus one third is 0.33, and does that equal two six, which is equal to one third, all right? Two over six is equal to one third, so 0.5 plus 0.33 does not equal 0.33. That is also false. Um, one half plus one third equals five sixths. Okay, well, in this case, I have a 2, a 3, and a 6. Let's just simplify or get common denominators. So this is going to be a 6 plus a 6 equals 5 sixths. This is a 2, so I have to multiply it by 3 to get this. So 3 times 1 is 3. This is a 3. I have to multiply it by 2 to make it a 6. 2 times 1 is 2. And 3 plus 2 is 5 over 6. That is true. Okay. Okay. K. Okay. 3 squared is 9. What did I just hit? Okay, let's try that again. Erase first. 3 squared is 9. Plus 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 16 equal to 49? I don't think so. That's false. Alright, 3 squared is 9 times 4 squared, which is 16, equals 12 squared, which is 144. Okay, well, 9 times 6 is 54, carry the 5. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 5 is 14. 144 definitely equals 144, so that is true. Okay, 3 squared plus 4 cubed equals 12 to the 6. 3 squared is 9. 4 cubed is 4 times 4, which is 16, times 4, which is 64. So 9 plus 64 is 73. And 12 to the 6th power is ginormous. 12 squared is 144 times 12 times 12 times 12. That is a really big number. I don't know what it is without doing it in a calculator, but that is not going to be 73. All right, so 3 squared plus times, um, whoops, let me go back. I just noticed something. That's not 73. This is not plus. It is times. 9 times 4 is 36. 9 times 6 is 54. Plus 3 is 57. 576. Well, 12 times 12 is 144. Times another 12 is going to be over 1,000. So that is still false. But I didn't want to leave that mistake there. 3 squared is 9. Times 3 cubed, which is 27. Equals 3 to the 5th. Well, 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27 times 3 is 81 times 3 is 243. 9 times 7 is 63. 9 times 2 is 18 plus 6 is 24. And those are true. That is a true statement. Okay, page 4 brings us to exercise 3. Could a number sentence be both true and false? And part B says, could a number sentence be neither true nor false? Well, what is something that is not true or false? Hmm. Okay, well, the answer to this, these two questions is all in one statement. <clears throat> a number sentence has a left-hand numerical expression that evaluates to a single number and has a right-hand numerical expression that evaluates to a single numerical value. Either of these two single values match or they do not. A numerical sentence is thus either true or false and not both. But it has to be one of the two. So A and B is definitely um, true or false, but it can't be neither and it can't be both. Okay, so then we have this statement here. An algebraic equation is a statement of equality between two expressions. Algebraic equations can be number sentences when both expressions are numerical, but often they contain symbols whose values have not been determined. Okay, so exercise four says, which of the following are algebraic equations? Okay, so here's the definition. 
an algebraic equation is a statement of equality between two expressions. So 3.1x minus 11.2 is an expression. 2.5x plus 2.3 is an expression, and there is an equal sign. So that is an algebraic expression. I'm sorry, algebraic equation. 10 pi to the fourth plus 3 equals 99 pi squared. Both expressions set equal. That is an algebraic equation. Pi plus pi equals 2 pi. Algebraic expression equal to an algebraic expression. That is an algebraic equation. Part 4. 1 half plus 1 half is an expression. Equals 2 fourths. That is an expression. That is an algebraic equation. All right, so 79 pi cubed plus 70 pi squared minus 56 pi plus 87 is an algebraic expression. Equals 60 pi plus 29,928 divided by pi squared. That is also an expression that is an algebraic equation. So they're all algebraic expressions. All algebraic equations, I should say. Everything on the left is an expression. Everything on the right is an expression. Therefore, there is an equal sign in each. So they are all algebraic equations. B says, which of them are also number sentences? Okay. So what they mean by this is a number sentence is when both expressions are numerical. Okay, so that's what a number sentence is. So, looking at these, what they're basically saying is they're all numbers. Well, pi is a number, so this is a numerical equation or numerical number sentence. This is a number. It's 3.14159, blah, 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 blah. It's not a variable that can change. It is. It has a numerical value. Pi is a number, not a variable. So this is a number sentence. This is a number sentence. This is a number sentence. These are all numbers. Pi again, number sentence. And A has a variable x in it. We don't know what x is, that is not a number, so the answer is 2, 3, 4, and 5. This is not a number sentence. Okay, page 5 brings us to part C. So I copied over all of those um, equations from the prior page, because we're going to answer another question on them. It says for each number sentence, state whether the number sentence is true or false. Okay, so we're not going to do this one. That is not a number sentence. Uh, 10 pi to the fourth plus 3 equals 99 pi squared. Uh, there is no way that is true. That's false. And if you don't believe me, let's do the calculator thing. On clear 10 pi to the fourth. 10 pi is second caret to the power of 4 plus 3, and get an answer. It's 977.09. Equals 99 pi squared. Well, 99 pi squared is... nine seventy seven point oh nine oh eight three five seven. So you notice the difference here. It's off. The decimals are not equal. You'd think it was equal until you got to the thousandth position, but it is false. Now pi plus pi equals 2 pi. Well, let's see. Pi plus pi, and then do 2 pi, and those are equal. That is true. 1 half plus 1 half equals two halves, which equals one. Two quarters is not equal to one, it's equal to one half. So that is false. Um, and this mess. Okay, definitely gonna need a calculator for this. 79 pi to the third power plus 70 pi squared minus 56 pi plus 87. Okay? Now there's another way I could have done this. I could have, no. Yeah, I could have multiplied both sides by pi squared. 
and then subtracted 60 pi to see if all those equaled this and so on, but I'm just using the calculator to save time. So we have 3051.438977 on the left, and that keeps going because of the pi's. And then finally, we're going to put the other side in, which is 60 pi, and make sure you put your numerator in parentheses so the calculator knows PEMDAS, and then 29928. And that whole thing is divided by pi squared. And when I do that, it looks like they're equal. Okay, so... I'm going to do this a different way, though. It doesn't go out far enough. 3051.438977. Let me look at something. Okay, so I'm going to look at 5 a little more closely. I'm going to do this algebraically. So if I multiply by pi squared to both sides, okay, the whole thing, these pi squareds cancel. 79 pi cubed times pi squared is 79 pi to the third plus squared, which is to the fifth, plus 70 pi squared times pi squared is 70 pi to the 2 plus 2, which is 4, minus 56 pi times pi squared is pi to the 3rd. And that I'm going to subtract 87 from both sides. And that is going to give me 8 minus 7 is 1. 12 minus 8 is 4. That is now an 8. 9, 2. Okay, so that comes out to be 29,841. That is an integer. There is no way we can have a pi in a term and get an integer answer or an integral answer. So if I go back here and do 79 pi to the power of 5 plus... 70 pi to the power of, oops, clear. Let's clear this whole thing. Let's clear this whole thing. 79 pi to the fifth. I didn't come out of the exponent. Plus 70 pi to the fourth. Minus 56 pi cubed and hit enter, I get 29,257.83. Um, and I got 29,841 solving algebraically if I did that correctly. Okay, I see what I did. I forgot my 60 pi. All right, so this 60 pi is still over here with this 60 pi. So if I subtract 60 pi from both sides, then I would get 79 pi to the fifth plus 70 pi to the fourth minus 56 pi cubed minus 60 pi equals my 2,000, 29,000. 841. So again, I have all these pi values. So in my calculator, what I need to do is take my previous answer, and I forgot to subtract 60 pi from it. So if I do that now, and hit enter, I get 29,069.34442, and that is definitely not 29,841. Okay, so that is going to be a big false. Okay, so solving this algebraically actually makes it make more sense than a calculator. So you really need to be careful about using calculators because it said that it looked like that was true only going out so many decimal places. Okay, exercise five says when an algebraic equation, when algebraic equations contain a symbol whose value has not yet been determined, we use analysis to determine whether A, the equation is true for all possible values of the variables, or B, the equation is true for a certain set of possible values or variables. 
of the variables, or C, the equation is never true for any of the possible values of the variables. For each of the three cases, write an algebraic equation that will be correctly described by this case. Use only the variable x when x represents a real number. Okay, so the easiest way to write an equation that is true, let's do this in black, for all possible values is use a um, theorem or a property. So if I said, I don't know, 2 times 5x plus 3 equals, and I use a distributive property, well, 2 times 5x is 10x plus 2 times 3 is 6. So no matter what I plug in for x, this is going to be true. If I put 0 in, 0 plus 3 is 3, 0, zero plus 3 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. Plug 0 in here, 10 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 6 is 6, 6 equals 6, and so on. Okay, next time we do it is, it says the equation is true for a certain set of possible values. Okay, so then we just don't want to have a variable on both sides. So if I said 5x plus 3 equals um, 8, okay, then there's only one value I can substitute in for x that would make this statement true. So you subtract 3 and get 5, and divide by 5 and you get x to be 1. 5 times 1 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8. No other number besides 1 will make this true. So there is an equation for b. C says the equation is never true for any of the possible values of the variable. Well, I can then say, um, well, think about certain things. What can a number squared never be? A number squared can never be negative. So x squared cannot equal negative 4. That would not ever be true. Because you square a number, you're always getting a positive answer. Okay, so properties make... Um, doing problems like this simpler. Example one, consider the following scenario. Julie is 300 feet away from her friend's front porch and observe someone is sitting on the porch. Given that she did not specify otherwise, we would assume that the someone Julie thinks she sees is a human. We cannot guarantee that Julie's observational statement is true. It could be that Julie's friend has something on the porch that merely looks like a human from far away. Julie assumes she is correct and moves closer to see if she can figure out who it is. As she nears the porch, she declares, Ah, it is our friend John Barry. So what this is basically saying is, we think something might be true, but upon further investigation, we then determine, such as this problem right here, Ah, John Barry is the number one. Five times one makes this statement true. That's basically what they're saying here. Okay, page 6 brings us to exercise 6. Name a value of the variable that would make each equation a true number sentence. Here are several examples of how we can name the value of a variable. So we could say, let w equal negative 2. Then w squared equals 4 is true. Negative 2 squared is 4. w squared equals 4 is true when w equals negative 2. There's another way of saying that w squared equals 4 is true if w equals negative 2. w squared equals 4 is true for w equal to negative 2 and w equal to positive 2. So there's several ways we can, um, there are several examples of how we can name values of a variable. There might be more than one option for what numerical values to write, and feel free to write more than one possibility. Warning, some of these are tricky. Keep your wits about you. Okay, so here we go. A, let x equal, then 7 plus x equals 12 is true. So if I want to solve this, I subtract 7 from both sides, and I get x equals 5. So let x equal 5, then 7 plus 5 equals 12 is true. Let blank, let r equal then 3r plus 0 0.5 equals 37 halves is true. So let's bring this over here. 3r plus, I don't want a decimal any fraction, so I'll change this to 1 half, equals 37 over 2. So in order to get rid of this and solve for r, I subtract a half from both sides. When I do that, I get 3r on the left, 
37 minus 1 is 36. Now it's even, so I can simplify this and say 3r equals half of 36, which is 18. Divide both sides by 3, and r equals 6. So we'll let r equal 6, then 3r plus a half equals 37 halves. It's true. Okay, so now m cubed equals negative 125 is true for what? For m, for when m equals, see how it's for w equal to, for m equal to, and then we need to find the equ equation, or the number. So we say m cubed equals negative 125. So I take the cube root of both sides. The inverse of cubing is cube rooting. So I take the cube root of negative 125. Now remember, we can take cube roots, we can take odd roots of negative numbers, but we can't take odd roots of, I'm sorry, we can't take even roots of positive or negative numbers. Okay, so we can't take the square root of negative 125. That would not be a real number. So this would give me m. And 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. So the answer to this is m equals negative 5. Because negative 5 times itself 3 times. But negative times a negative is positive times a negative is. So it would look like this. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25 times negative 5 is negative 125. Okay, so my answer is negative 5. A number x and its square, x squared, have the same value when x equals, so when we square something and it's equal to itself, so in other words, they're saying x equals x squared, is true when what numbers? So if I get all my x's on one side, or if I divide by x, there's two different ways we can do this. So if I subtracted x from both sides, then I get 0 equals x squared minus x. And then factor that, that'd be x minus 1 times x. So x times x is x squared, x times 1 is x. And then set each of these equal to 0. Well, x would equal 0 here, and x would equal 1 here. So this could be 1. 1 equals 1 squared, which is 1. And 0 equals 0 squared. So when x equals 0, and I should say or x equals 1. E, the average of 7 and n is negative 8 if n equals what number? Okay, let me clean this page up. Okay, so the average of 7 and n. Well, the average is when you take two numbers, add them together, and divide by 2. That has to equal negative 8. So I multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of these. So I have 7 plus n equals negative 16. And I subtract 7 from both sides. And I get n equals negative 23. Okay, and let me erase that, and let's do one more here, f, let a equal, okay, the variable's a, 2a equals a plus a is true, um, well, 2 times 1 is 2, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 plus 3 is 6. Um, so this is any number. And if I did that algebraically, 2a equals a plus a is the same as saying 2a equals 2a. Subtract 2a from both sides, and I get 0 equals 0. So whenever we have a number equal to itself and all the variables go away, this is always true. Okay, and finally the last one. Q plus 67 equals Q plus 68 is true for 
Q equal to, well, Q plus 67 equals Q plus 68. If I get all my Qs on one side by subtracting Q over, that goes away, and I get 67 equals, these cancel, I get 68. 67 never equals 68, so there is no value of Q that can make this true. So I'd say for no value of Q. There is no value of Q that would make that true. Okay, page 7 brings us to the end of lesson 10. Go do your problem set.